Welcome back to another episode of Swans Cast podcast. I'm joined once again by Lee. So welcome back, Lee. Hello. So you weren't with me in the last episode, but the last episode actually has kind of been um, very successful for us. Our most watched video on YouTube and most listened to podcast on Spotify and Apple, which we are now on, and Google or every other podcast platform that there might be. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for for listening to that or watching it. Um, obviously, I did a little bit of an interview with uh, another Barnsley-focused podcast um, where he gave us a lot of insight into what we can expect from our new manager, which which was obviously Barnsley's former manager, uh, Michael Duff. I mean, it's very interesting for me anyway. I didn't really know what to expect. A little bit of what I thought going into his, his time here is maybe not so accurate so like the comparisons of steve cooper there are some but maybe not as direct um it's and i i guess we said it was in between cooper and martin is probably more right but he did reassure me that he does like to play football so i guess that's um a good thing to hear but i know you've watched it anyway and i'm sure a lot of people have i just wanted to say thank you for everyone that did support us there and there's a couple of housekeeping things to kind of discuss before we get into the podcast so this this episode is going to mark the first one of the new season, if you like, officially. And it was a bit weird because we we're talking about the new management stuff in the last couple of videos, but we're going to be marking this one as a start of season four, Swans cast. So, four season. I know it's only technically been like, um, I think three. No, where did we start? We started in lockdown twenty one, and it the so lockdown it's only like two yeah. years. The January, because we caught the yeah. end of the season of that year. Yeah. Two full seasons. Now we're going into the third, into the fourth season. Um, yeah, weird and weird how it works, but yeah. Um, <laughs> we've had three managers of Swans Cast podcast. So welcome on for the ride. Hopefully everyone can continue to subscribe. So we've actually shot up loads in subscribers as well, come up to five hundred eighty-eight. And I did promise when we got to five hundred, we'd do a giveaway. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. So hopefully by the time this video goes live, if not by the time it goes live very soon after. So keep your eyes peeled on our social media because we will be tweeting and posting on Instagram um, how to enter into the giveaway, okay? So I'm going to tell you to enter now, but when you do go to enter, those are the sort of posts you need to go to to put your entry in. So the prize is going to be a Swans top of your choice. So that's the home kit, the away kit, or goalkeeper jersey, or if by the time we pick a winner, the third kit is announced. Obviously, you can pick the third kit as well, depending on availability. And you can also tell us your size, whether you want it in adults um, or kids as well. So it'll be one kit for the winner, whatever size you need. Um, we'll discuss with the winner at the time how we will get that to you, whether we buy it on Swan's shop to kind of send to you if you're not living necessarily local. Uh, but if you are in the area, We'll organise whatever is the best means for you to collect the prize. But obviously, we'll contact you either on Twitter or Instagram um, when when we pick a winner. Um, so to enter, as I said, head over to Twitter, and I'll be putting a tweet up announcing the giveaway, and the information will also be there. But all you're going to need to do is make sure you're following. So if you're not following, none of the entries will be counted. So you have to be a follower to be part of the prize draw. Okay, so. Make sure you're following, and then each one of these is an extra entry in the draw. So you'll have your name put in several times, and that is to retweet the tweet announcing the giveaway, like the tweet, and to comment a photo of your favourite thing about the Swans. It doesn't need to be a photo of yourself. It can be if you want it to be, like in the Swans top or in the stadium or whatever you want, or maybe you're on an away day, or it can just be your favourite player or your favourite moment, whatever you want. Just put a photo in there of your favourite thing ever about Swans, and again, there'll be another entry. So you've got three chances there to enter on Twitter. And then on Instagram, again, you have to be following, but you need to just like the post. You can share the, the post to your story. And again, comment your favorite Swansea moments. You can't share pictures in the comments on Instagram, but if you can just comment instead, a little bit of a description about your favorite Swansea moment, whether that's favorite player, favorite game, whatever it is, tell us in the comments. And again, each one of those, gives you a chance to enter so there's a potential six entries um and then if you'd like to come back to youtube if you're watching on youtube chuck in the comments below where you've entered 
and then we can obviously could try and keep track. We'll see it all anyway, but just to show us your support and tell us you've entered the giveaway, come back to the video, tell us in the comments how many times you've entered and where, if it's Twitter or Instagram. And obviously, we'll be sure to get in touch with you if you do win. The draw will happen on the first game of the season. So I'll just remind myself of when that is. Do you know that off the top of your head, Lee? Yeah, 5th of August, isn't it? I've got it there. Yeah, there we are. 5th of August, so Swansea City versus Birmingham City. And on that day, probably in the evening, because I believe I'm working, so after I get home, I will do the draw that evening. And we will announce it, obviously, on Twitter and Instagram as well. And in whatever podcast is done after that, we'll obviously announce the winner. We won't disclose any names or anything like that unless um, the person who wins is happy for that to be the case. Um, but yeah, we'll obviously discuss all the details with them when we have announced the winner. So we won't be using your information for anything either. That's why we want to do it on Twitter and Instagram so that we're not collecting any personal information. We just got you there and you have to be following in following us for us to be able to contact you as well because if you're not following we won't be able to necessarily message you to tell it tell you that you've won so very important to do that okay now we've got that out of the way we can actually get into the the football side of things um just wanted to make sure we touched on that because it's been a long time coming we have been promising for a while yeah and i said we'd get it done for the start of the season so i think it's a good way to kind of kick off season four of the podcast um it's a good start yeah, good start, and hopefully, hopefully, one of you lucky winners will be very happy with um, receiving this one's kit if you haven't already bought one this season, especially. So I know I haven't got mine yet, but we won't be putting our names in the draw. So, <laughs> okay, right, where to start then? So I haven't spoken to you on podcast since um, a lion actually got announced while we were recording, didn't it? But yeah. officially, then since he's been here, we haven't really touched on anything. So um, it's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. So first of all, then, I think we'll start the podcast off. We're going to talk about a new start under Duff. Um, going forward, we're also going to touch on some of the friendlies that have already happened. So there's been two. No detail about it necessarily, but it's a good baseline to kind of talk about where the squad's at at the moment. So we'll touch on some of the players, anything notable we've seen there. And then we're going to look at the transfer window so far as well so there has actually been a little bit of movement so we got some players to talk about that have joined we've got some staff that have joined we've also got uh, some current squad players that have been linked with moves elsewhere now i made this agenda i think two days ago on the 12th because uh, we were going to record a couple of days ago we had to postpone so there might have been a couple more updates since that i haven't included but anything that i've uh, seen today i have chucked in um like, for example, I think the whole Kyle Joseph thing into Blackpool and Yates got announced as I was doing it. So I have tweaked it for that. But we've got all that to discuss. And then there's a couple of links as well. Players that we might be in for going forward. Um, but yeah, let's kick things off then. Michael Duff, um, what are your initial thoughts going into this new chapter of Swansea City? Yeah, I'm quite uh, I'm quite excited, especially after hearing what... Um... The Barnsley fans have had to say about him. Definitely seems a bit more pragmatic um, on paper. Anyway, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But it sounds like there's, uh, you know, there's still an element of playing good football, which is what we want to see as a bonus, really. But um, he's really sort of really sort of drilling home that it's going to be, you know, with purpose and in the right in the right moments, and winning is the first objective. Um, and if you know if you can play good football as well, and that's a bonus. So, kind of where I think we need to be. I think it's where the club needs to be after the past couple of years. Um, like I said, it's sort of in the middle of Cooper and Martin. So I think it's quite exciting so far. I mean, say, you're saying the right things for me, um, but I think all, all managers when they come in say the right thing. So I think it's yeah. just gotta, you've just gotta. Um, Again, just gotta wait and see. But I like, young, but yeah, too. but I like, uh, I like, I like, I like what he's saying. I like what he's what he's trying to do anyway. Yeah, so obviously I spoke to Neil from Tykes TV. So shout out to him. Go check them out if you want a bit more insight to Michael Duff's time at Barnsley to see see what you can expect going forward here. Um, he did talk about the way that he speaks and gets the fans on board and gets them all excited. He said one, that's one of his biggest positives, I guess, in a way. Obviously, I, that also then made it very bittersweet when he left the way he did because 
I guess Martin did it in a way where he gets you all on board, supporting him, like really feeling he's here for the long term, he's here for a project, like he's different. Um, you leave when an opportunity comes, I'm sure, down the road, like he did to Barnsley, but he's here now, so we'll celebrate that. Um, yes, but he's been talking very well. And I guess being quite straight to the media is always good, and it's always what the fans like to see. So we'll see how how he gets on with that maybe when... There's a couple of results that don't go his way, and I'm sure he'll conduct himself well going forward. It's been interesting to listen to some of the interviews um, by him and Andy Coleman, who's been quite vocal, I would say, the last couple of weeks uh, for yeah. for his role as chairman. A lot more vocal than Winter used to be yeah, uh, in a short time here so far. Um, but yeah, so he actually said about his appointment of Michael... Michael has everything I envisaged, sorry, envisaged, envision when I think of a leader and a winner. So what do you make of that? I mean, you said more than that, but that was the main, basically what he was saying. Yeah, I think it's just the, seems to be the new regime, doesn't it? Because it's not just the, it's not just the manager change, isn't it? Which again is sort of feeding into a bit of excitement that, you know, the, the, the chairman is new. It's been a bit of a shake up on the board as well. New faces coming in. Um, and they seem to just be sticking to that direction of winning. Uh, like you said there uh, about Michael Duff, you know, just being a winner and a leader. So I, I don't know. I just think, again, new chairman saying the right things, even though he didn't start off saying the right things um, <laughs> a couple of months back. But uh, no, I, I just, I, I like I like the way the club is sort of, try, I like the direction they're trying to go in now. Um and we don't know, you know, if, if if it works out, it begs the question whether, the, you know, it just really wasn't working with the people they had in last time. Maybe the the people there just didn't fit, you know, the combinations of Martin and Winter and, and the setup. Maybe they just thought it wasn't working and, they, and, they, and they're changing it. So, again, it's just uh, it's still a bit of a wait and see. But, um, yeah, I'm, just, I'm still excited about that. So he talks a lot about his... Uh firm belief of hard work so i guess displaying his leadership in his first interview michael duff um so he was saying things like i would want everyone here and every player here to want to be successful i am a firm believer the talk is cheap i don't need to shout it from the rooftops i believe hard work pays you back football does not owe you anything whether you have had a good career or bad career whether you are young or old the moment you think you have football worked out you find out that you don't. So I think that's that's a key line, isn't it? Especially yeah. after Russell Martin's tough uh, period. Um, yeah. So you might get bored of me saying it all the time, but hard work does pay you back. I did not win in the first 10 games of my coaching career, but I stuck to what I felt was right and what I believe in. In the 250 to 260 games since, I think that has worked for me. But just because it worked before does not mean it works here. So whatever happens here, and of course I want it to be a success, I know I could put my head on the pillow at night and know that it has not been down to a lack of hard work. I have a good feeling. I think this is a good fit, and I hope I can make it work. But it's not about me. It's about Swansea City. So it's not about me talking about what I want to do. It's about getting a team to win by playing attractive football. But I don't want to do it at the expense of the other one at the expense of the other. So he, he wants to do winning and playing attractive football. By the sounds of yeah, it, there's not. Enough. So it'd be interesting to see how that looks on the pitch. Um, and he carries on then. We will need everyone pulling in the same direction. We need to align all different sectors of the club. We need each other. If the team wins, we will win. Everyone is happy. The chairman is happy. The players are happy. The staff are happy and the supporters are happy. And if we are not winning, it is irrelevant what anyone else says. I want to win playing good football. So, I mean, we've heard similar things before. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to win my way sort of thing, but it's not quite I want to win my way. He just wants to win playing good football. But I, from what I've seen in his past clubs, he is not afraid to change things when they are not working, um, to tweak the stuff to make sure he's still playing good football, but get results. Yeah, that's fair enough. Again, saying the right things, that, that's, that's exciting for me because... Uh, I'd much rather be winning games than, uh, you know, just playing good football and not winning games. Yeah. 
Uh, but again, I just think I said I said a million times. I think it's the way football is going. You can't necessarily just play good football and stick to that and be that stubborn because they think that you know that football is kind of it's been worked out, doesn't it? We've talked it before. So you've got to be he's saying the right things there. That he's got to you know he's not afraid to change things, and I think that's right because, like we said, I think that you know we were playing that style of football ten years ago. The game moves on quickly. People know how to play against it. You saw times last season where teams are happy to just sit in and let us have 90% possession and then be effective on a counter-attack or wait for a mistake. So I think, um, again, I like what he said there, like that he's going to sort of say, well, you know, we're going to try and play good football, but, uh, you know, if it doesn't work, I want to win the game and I'll change it. So I guess I guess you do that though, don't you? When your yeah. predecessor is gone, you kind of become like the better version than you. You kind of say, you know, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I like to play good football, which is what you liked about Russell Martin, but also I'm going to get results. But it is this. I think the key difference between what they both were saying, he's not mentioned possession once. He's saying attacking football, win by playing attacking football. Yeah, fair I, enough. I, I don't necessarily think that's what Martin would describe it as. Patient no. football, yeah, is maybe what he would have gone with. But um, there's different ways of be, being attacking. I guess is the point, isn't there? So he's saying, "I want to win playing good football." Um, and the two things he said was winning and attacking. So maybe it's quite exciting to look forward for. So and again, going back to the conversation I had with Neil, um, fitness is going to be a massive thing. Which at times we criticised Russell Martin's team for their fitness especially the way that he wanted to play. But by all accounts, he's going to have the team out of the blocks full on in the first 10, 15 minutes, uh, get on top of the other team, I guess, before it maybe calms down a bit. And then they but then they can switch that on when an opportunity presents itself. So yeah, fitness, I think, out of the blocks is going to be a big thing. And that's perhaps why they there was that thing, wasn't there? I got it later on, actually, but I'll skip ahead to it now. With... Um, Jamie Patterson put a post up, didn't he, on social media of the players in the Spanish training camp looking oh, very right. tired. Now, oh, yeah, I did see it, yeah. I put this in a section at the end. I've got under news about some of the players have been speaking in interviews, but I'll put it forward because it's kind of relevant to you to the point. Um, so, yeah, if you saw that picture, it was a couple of them. I think Kyle Norton was there, um, Liam Walsh, I think, and Jamie Patterson uploaded this photo basically of... Uh, of a more looking pretty tired. <laughs> um, Morgan Whitaker as well, it was, and Nathan Wood. And they were looking exhausted sitting in the like uh, changing rooms after they've had a session, clearly. Now, the headline to this article is what I thought was quite funny, especially after last season. Now, I mean, maybe the whole thing with Russell Martin, like maybe we don't know fully what happened because obviously uh, Oberfermi and Patterson went out with the team after the World Cup and one left and one eventually came back. We thought it was second time Patterson was a bit uh, not committed to the cause, if you like. Um, so yeah. this is the article headline. Jimmy Patterson, you've got to show the fans that you're working hard. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, yeah, again, that, that is true. You, do. Uh, do you believe him? I don't know. I think we've seen, uh, we've seen him be more vocal I think, it, it, you might think I'm wrong, but I, you've definitely seen him be more vocal since Russell Martin has left. He sort of... I was going to say... I, I, maybe it's just media. what I've noticed. Yeah, maybe it's just what I've noticed, but because I'm not on social media all the time, you know. But I think I've seen him tweeting, I've seen him putting stuff up on Instagram, being in interviews with the, with the Swans, you know, media. Um, he seems to have come out come out of the darkness all of a sudden in this preseason since Russell Martin has left. Whether or not, like you said, it's just going to be... Um, it's just going to be, you know, for now, and then he'll kick up a fuss again, and he'll still he still wants his move, but um, I don't know, I I, I still I still got that feeling that um, I think there was maybe a bit of a rift there with some players, not all of them, but some of them, Patterson being one, Norton being another one, getting a new contract as soon as he's gone. Um, so we wait and see. It, it happens, or if you you don't get on with the manager. And then a new one comes in. You think, right, here we go. I'm yeah. starting again. But if we can get the Jamie Patterson back that we had in his first season, yeah, I'd be more than happy with that. Oh, it'd be like another new sign-in. Yeah. 
So he actually spoke about his difficulties last season though in his other interview. He's right in saying he's been quite vocal because he's, he's got two interviews up on Swansea website um, in like the space of a week, I think it was, two separate ones. So he's talking about last season um, with a niggle and joint injury that disrupted his preseason. He said last year was difficult. Uh, he had a nig niggly injury that came in the summer uh, and knocked him out of his stride and he had to keep pulling out of training and he was going into games not feeling his best. Um, he said it was frustrating. I always tried to play through niggles, which I wouldn't say is the best idea, but I'm stubborn because I want to play every minute of every game. Yep. We went through a bit of a bad patch of form as a team and I was just trying to take it on myself and produce performances, but really I wasn't right. I ended up having a lot of time out saw some specialists and got it sorted towards the end of the season. So this is suggesting he was injured for all of that time where he kind of went AWOL. Yeah. But I don't recall ever being having the clarity to say that. Russell Martin seemed to give the impression that his head wasn't in it, he wasn't trying hard enough. And Jimmy Patterson is now yeah. coming out and Russell Martin's gone to clarify, no, I had niggly injuries and I wasn't performing because of those and decided I needed to get it sorted. It's just a bit yeah. weird, isn't it? Like, I mean, they, I don't know. Martin expected him to just play through the pain, and because he said no, I want to get it sorted, they fell out. Potentially. Not to keep know. going on about Russell Martin, but obviously it's just interesting that Patterson's come up with this information now, and not while he was on the sidelines for about two months. Yeah, that's right. No, that is right. I no, I, I definitely think there's something there's something to it. I I do, especially with some players. So, uh, you know, we wait we yeah. wait and see. I think, like I said before as well, I remember the man in thing where he came out and just said outright that he's not signing a new contract in the middle of the season. That's going to discuss and behold, that later he's gone. Well, actually. Just man, yeah, well, we'll come back to was that. Was there some then, conversations there? <laughs> I no, I like that. I'm I, not planning on be being here next year, so maybe just don't. You know, don't renew your contract and you can come with I, I wouldn't be surprised. I generally wouldn't be surprised. Apparently, Ma Manning was saying it was the best move of his career or something. Um, I couldn't turn down working with Russell Martin again. That's what he said. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And like I said, again, everyone slated Cooper. I've said this a million times, we'll move on, but everyone slated Cooper saying he probably had an interview while we were doing. You can't tell me there wasn't stuff going on. Towards the end of the season, he's tapped up players from his own current club for his next unknown club. You can't tell me it's not happening. It's hundred percent happening. I mean, I guess if you, I don't know why none of us put money on. As soon as Martin's gone to Southampton, Matt Manning following him, it was nailed on. Let's be honest. It was, yeah, it was nailed on. It was obvious that it was just, coming. Yeah, but I just think it, like again, like we just get the same treatment when the manager goes. They they're in it for themselves. So there's no, um, you know. That's just what it is what it is. I just I hope I hope we beat Southampton twice. So if you go Christmas if we do on it. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that. I'm looking forward to that boxing day still. Well, that'd be an interesting one. Um yeah. yeah, so I mean I mean, bringing this back to the present then, yeah. It's good, I guess, to see, regardless of your thoughts on the Patterson situation, this gives us an insight of his side, which we never really had. I think a lot of people, including us, jumped on Oh, well, he did this last January when he tried to force him through a move and now he's disappeared again. He just don't like it when the going gets tough. And we did. And maybe that is true. We still have, you know, we don't know the facts. But he's here now with a new manager and it looks like he's being quite vocal and trying to make an impression. So ultimately for the team, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes on in the interview to touch on how he's only one of like six senior players left at the club now and talking about his role in regards to that. So I guess that's uh, important as well for him and for Duff to utilise in terms of the mix of experience and youth that he's going to have with this squad. Yeah. Cool. Right, let's talk about some of the squad and friendlies then. And we're obviously going to keep talking about Duff as we go through the agenda because it's, it's, it's pre-season, so we just want to see what's going on. So we had two friendlies. First one was against Haverford West. That's not where Lee Trundle has gone, is it? No. He's gone. I thought you meant the Mumbles Rangers. 
Oh, is it he's been a member. Back, you know? I, I can't remember. He's got a new Welsh club every year these days, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's doing a tour. I don't know if you saw the Twitter Leslie, earlier, Aaron Ford. posted about... Um, I did see going it. nuts about Aaron Ramsey, isn't he? Yeah. So um, I, I saw some... I don't even know where it came from. But somebody, Swans fan, said something and um, about the Ramsey transfer. And the, re- the reply for the Cardiff fan was, um, we're talking about a club who thinks Lee Trundle is a legend. So I just I just replied to it with the um yeah. the picture of him wearing that top that we all know he wore. You know, the the one where the Swansea guy is is having a from the good Johnson Pink trophy. Yeah final good time on the Cardiff shirt. Um <laughs> saying yeah too right we do. I mean it's quite funny though hearing the arguments of why apparently Lee Trundle is not a legend. So they're all coming at this picture now saying yeah but he only scored goals in League One <laughs> It's like, right. So why does that mean he can't be a legend for the club? Because we were in League One when he was doing it, ultimately. So if he was one of the key players during that period for a few seasons, it just makes no sense. So somebody's reply was, how many goals did he score in the Championship? Again, I can't remember now. I think somebody replied, it's it's, it's, it's carnage on Twitter, basically. Somebody replied to that then, um, how many Premier League goals did Whittingham score? Now I can't remember. God, it just makes me laugh. I didn't just even rely on bit after that picture. It's just that picture relying on Twitter for some great, for some great debate. <laughs> it's just no logic. All I've seen all over Twitter today is like, and I don't even think it's officially been announced yet, has he? I think it's on the cards, isn't it? I know, I think it's, he was I know it's very likely yesterday. happening, but in terms of like an official announcement, all I've seen is them being happy about Ramsey's coming, but also saying how much is triggered triggered the Swans fans but I don't really think it has I think they all the Swans fans are just laughing at how excited they're getting about it like we got excited when Joe Allen came back yeah but yeah. we've also said on the podcast I'm not sure if it was the best use of the money to bring Joe Allen back it was like nostalgia yeah? I'm not saying he had a bad season he didn't but in terms of our squad we probably could have used that money elsewhere yeah um and I think the point a lot of Swans fans are trying to make out is like an Aaron Ramsey, 32 years old or whatever he is now, his legs are gone a little bit. I don't really think it's going to have the impact that they think he's going to have. He no. scored one goal last season. Yeah, exactly. I, I, in, the, in the French I, league. It's very similar to, like you said, like the Joe Allen one. I mean, it's a good signing. Yeah, he's good. good sign. If he can keep him fit, he's a good signing. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, it's a good signing in the championship, but from what I've seen, I think um, I wouldn't not not going to say he's past it, but I've seen him play for Wales, and lately he just doesn't um, yeah doesn't I'd do much to see him in games. Yeah, I I can't remember the last time I saw him play well for Wales. He didn't play well in the World Cup no. at all, and he's not the Aaron Ramsey from Euro twenty sixteen or whatever it was. No, he perform sure. well in the championship at this level. Definitely, yeah. put a, he, and you know he'll like be brilliant when he plays in the derby. Um, it, but well, well, if he's fit, but I mean, over a long term, <laughs> long term season, it's the same with Joe Allen. It's exactly the same. You're not going to get them playing Middlesbrough away on Saturday and then Blackburn away on Tuesday and then home again on the sat on the Saturday after. You're just not going to get it. No, no, I agree. Like, I mean. Would every club in the championship probably like a player of Aaron Ramsey's quality? Yeah. Is he the star player signing? They seem to think, I guess, because they're on transfer embargo, maybe it is for them because they can't really get much. Um, yeah. And it is a nostalgia homecoming. I understand that. Um, but I just, I feel like maybe when people are talking about the end of the season, I'm going to put my neck on the line that I feel like he's going to be one of them that people might be like oh he's a bit of a flop didn't really do what his name suggested and not to say that that doesn't mean he didn't have a good season it's just you've got to respect where he is in his career as well yeah yeah he didn't do much of Rangers did he when he went there no no yeah. I know what you mean I, I think There's, maybe um... he needs to drop He's what is the attacking midfielder normally he likes to play doesn't he maybe yeah. it's time he drops into like more of a Joe Allen role but then I'm not sure how much that suits his game. But then I don't know if he's got the legs for the 
being a little bit further forward where he likes to play. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they manage him. Um, I don't know. I think it's, you know, again, like, you know, playing Dell's advocate, it's good that, uh, you know, he's Welsh playing back in Wales. Yeah. Um, it's good for that, and it'll get it'll get a buzz going, and it's a bit of a story for the derby. You'll probably have like you know Joe Allen, this is Ramsey, and it's quite good. I think it just it sort of it, it does sort of yeah. add to it. But no, I would say good. yeah, like proceed with caution because as like we said, we saw with Joe Allen. I, I just don't. It's just it just makes me laugh. Now, literally anything happens, like Cardiff is saying now Ramsey, it's like right, Swansea versus Cardiff again. Um, like you said, like you know, all of a sudden they're like, oh, it's a club as Lee Trundle. Is the hero thing. Like, all right. Yeah, I mean, could go on for yeah, days. And bring in me, bring in me too, if you want. Yeah, well, that's that's what that's what triggered everyone actually speaking about it. Do you see the article Wales Online posted? Because obviously Wales Online, Cardiff Online, basically, um, yeah. saying it was the most important and biggest transfer ever by a Welsh club ever. Basically, it was that Paul. What's his name? Oh, yeah, I don't know, Ab- Abatondo or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think he wrote the article, so obviously that's where the headline came from. So that's what all the Swans fans were reacting to. And it was people like, come on now, you saying, I know Ramsey's been a good player and he's had a good career, no one's questioning that. And he had a good career for Wales and we all respect him as Swansea fans for what he's done for Wales. But like, we signed the likes of Fernando Lorente, who's won the World Cup. Yeah. So that statement that you put on the headline of it being the, the most important and key Wel- Welsh club signing ever, and it was something about like only Cardiff have the pull to make these sort of signings. That's the kind of narrative that he was going for, and it was like, yeah, okay, calm down, mate, calm down. Like That's Aaron ridiculous. Ramsey, who you know he wasn't necessarily uh, ever present in his Arsenal days for their first team. Had a good career at Arsenal, but he was in and out of the team. There was one season, I think, that stands out that scored a lot of goals in. Didn't really have a good time when he went to Juventus. He didn't have a good time when he went to Rangers. And he done a right when he went to Nice last year. It was in Nice. Yeah, it was Nice, yeah, last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Nice. Yeah. Um I would take having the likes of Laurenti for one season and Yeah. Over that every day. So that was this is the biggest transfer in Welsh history. There, there we go. Yeah, and the other one I I think I mentioned on my personal account was Ronaldo. Well, speak for yourself. But uh, ironically, I said, I mean, they're forgetting about the amazing signing of uh, European golden boy Ronaldo Sanchez, and I spelt his name wrong because obviously, <laughs> obviously it was an ironic tweet saying how 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 unforgettable he was, and I forgot how to spell his name. So that got quote tweeted then saying that I was I was um, deluded. So I quote tweeted with the um, the gif of the pass into the billboard. I was just oh yeah, like, the point has gone straight over your head. Yeah, well, that happens a lot, doesn't it? I mean, obviously at the time it was a massive signing, and we all know how it went. Like none of us are stupid, but yeah, funny. Anyway, that's <laughs> enough of Cardiff fans on Twitter. Maybe we can make that a weekly section. I think that would be quite. Just a weekly heads gone from Cardiff fans. I've just seen as well fresh news. Swansea City have just announced Pablo Hernandez has just announced his retirement. There's another one. Oh, is he? There's, a, there's another. Oh, oh yeah. There. There's another one. Absolutely hammered signing. Caps for Spain in the, what was it, the Euros he played in? Yeah. So, World Cup, one of them. Anyway, back to what me, we were actually me talking too, about. Me too got a Spain cap while playing for us. Yeah. What other big signings are there? I mean, many from the Premier League time. You could say Andre Ayew's. Ayew. At the time, that was a big signing. Yeah. I know we re-signed Wilfred Boney, but like technically that signing a Manchester City, ex-Manchester City Champions League striker. Yeah, I would be days. Even though that flopped. Uh? Yeah, you kind of need to take out our Premier League time to fit, fit their narrative, don't you? You have to forget about that. That's what it was. It was. It was. Um, it wasn't just the Ramsey thing. They said this, and when we signed Craig Bellamy, the two biggest ever pulls for a Welsh club, and only one club would be able to pull off these signings. It's yeah. literally the same as Joe Allen coming to us. You, they started up in Cardiff. They are Cardiff boys. Joe Allen was a Swansea boy. That's literally all it is. I guarantee, if it was like the case of Ramsey was from Swansea and he played for us before he went to Arsenal, then it would be the other way around. Yeah, but. 
whatever. We'll um, we're happy with. But there we go. We'll move on. Yeah. Watch him <laughs> score a hat trick in the derby now because. Oh, probably yeah, yeah. It's the only game he'd play in, so. Probably, um, so yeah. Swansea played Haverford West and they won two 0 Goals from Joel Perot and Joshua Thomas. So Perot still still scoring for them. <laughs> still we'll banging talk about him a little bit later. Um, and then the second friendly was Swansea nil, Brondby nil. They played a friendly against Brondby. Yep. So I'm not going to read through the teams, but I was going to pick out some notable absentees from what I could see, and perhaps some of the youth team players maybe we should keep an eye on. So Josh Thomas is the obvious one to start on. He scored against Harvard West. So um, he's an exciting talent, forward player, a striker. Yeah. I think maybe one to keep an eye on. If Michael Duff does like to play two up top, he might go through quite a lot of strikers, especially when there's injuries. Maybe we'll we'll see an opportunity for Joshua Thomas, unless he goes out on loan. <clears throat> That's a yep. one to keep your eyes on. I think Cameron Congreve. I, I I feel like he needs a loan spell. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, I think so. I think that would probably do him a world of good. Get some, uh, just get some proper game time under his belt. I think it's probably it's probably the right thing to do for him. Yeah. I agree. Because like I think he's only nineteen still and he's been in and out of the first team and he had a little bit of a rough one last year where he got subbed like in the first half or something or half time. Yeah. And then was out to the match day squad for weeks after that. Yeah. Which he's young in he like he needs to go and get experience at the professional level, at first team level, maybe in League Two or League One. Yeah. I'm not saying he probably he's got the talent probably to become a fixture in our team. But Ollie Cooper, who did break in last year, is a few year, years ahead in his development and managed to get there by having a good season at Newport, for example. So I feel like maybe even Newport is a good place for the likes of Cameron Congreve to get a loan. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if that happens. It's not a bad shout. Joel Cotterill was on um was playing in these matches. He I think made his first team debut last season. I think he's a, is he a winger or a midfield somewhere? Cotterell, yeah, I think he's a midfielder, isn't he? So he'd be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Azim Abdullahi had some more game time. He's been knocking about in some of the cup matches he was involved in last year. I think he came in and came on in the League Cup match. And it was nice to see yeah. as well, Brandon Cooper was in. Yeah. Was playing in these friendlies. So I'm wondering I noticed if, that. if yeah. he can get involved this season. Well, like, well, you know, it's only fair that the manager comes in and gives everyone a chance, but uh, he was kind of brushed aside as well, wasn't he? Yeah, but, after um, yeah. I think came in and made him like, is right, you're going to be in the centre on my back three. And then everyone came yeah. back and he signed a couple of players and then he's just not even there anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see if he gets another chance. I mean, did he went on loan last year? Didn't he go on loan to Swindon or something? I can't remember. Or was yeah, it Forest so he went Green? on loan and got recalled in the... In, Christmas didn't he? And then he got injured. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I think. Uh, and enough. then we had Joe Thomas and Ben Lloyd also. I think uh, some players that have knocked about the first team a little bit. But it'd be interesting to see. It's always interesting when a new manager comes in to see what youth players he thinks has got the potential to kind of make an impact in the first team. Yeah. Philip Lissai as well. Well, Lissai. Apologies if I'm saying that name wrong. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, the important part was the notable absentees. So I'm going to get Kyle Joseph off the list here first because, like I said, I'd done this before it was announced that he'd left. So case closed, I think. Like, we we know the reasons well, behind that That one. makes sense why he was missing, yeah. Yeah. Thought he would have been involved otherwise. Um, Stephen Bender, I didn't realise he's actually out till Christmas. Oh, is he? I didn't realise that either. Apparently so. I thought he was back in the summer. It was a nasty injury. Still out. So we are being linked with some goalkeepers, and I'd imagine that is why. Because yeah, he's, he's uh... yeah. I well, I didn't think he would be out. To, I guess you kind of just assumed you, that everyone's going to be fit by the start of the season when they get injured in the previous season. But um, yeah, I didn't realise he was out till Christmas. But he did have a, a bit of a nasty knee injury there. So well, it'll be interesting to see if they bring someone in. Um, because if they do, where does that leave everyone when uh, Bender comes back? 
we'll talk more about that later. I've got him in the transfer section. There's one specific keeper that we've been linked with uh, that I've seen anyway. Uh, okay, Liam Walsh. Now, don't know whether I'm concerned with this one or whether it's just him being injured again. I couldn't find any information. I'd like to see Liam Walsh given a chance of featuring heavily this season, but it depends if he can keep himself on the pitch, but those friendlies he wasn't part of. It's so strange because he had that run in the team and he was brilliant, but he started the, he even started the derby away against Cardiff, didn't he? And he, yeah, was, he, he was brilliant in that season. game. Yeah. And then I think he did have another knock, didn't he? Or I think Russell Martin sort of said like, you know, he was still coming back. So they were managing him. And then I don't know if he did have like an injury towards the end of the season, but... Um, well, he travelled to the training camp. You know, he's in that picture I was on about earlier from Jimmy Patterson. So hopefully it is just a injury concern. I would like to see him part of the team. I think he really added something when he came back and was a very um, important reason why we picked up our form towards the end. Yeah, of the 100%. Yeah. Um, Nathaniel Ogbeta as well. Yeah. Considering we imagine. don't have a left back, I think. Maybe Carl Norton has been playing left back. Yeah, I'd imagine uh, he's probably on his way out, isn't he? I'd, I'd assume. Um, I think it's been on the cards for a while now, isn't it? It's never really worked out. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. I don't know if Joel Cotterill can play wing backs as well. It looks like he might have played left back as well in the second game. Maybe. Versatile, perhaps. Um, <clears throat> and Josh Ginley would. Chinelli, I think I said his name wrong the other day in a podcast I was on with Gabriel Sutton. <laughs> Chinelli. Obviously, he's just joined. We haven't spoken about it yet. We're going to go into that in a second. But he's already picked up a calf strain. And when Michael <laughs> yeah, Duff was great. talking about it, he said it wasn't a good one. Oh, great. Yeah, fantastic news. So I don't know if that just means he's going to miss most of pre-season or if it's going to extend into the season or not. There was no dates. But... Um, Never nice when you sign someone and then you can't see him playing in the first two friendlies because they just picked up a training ground injury. That's typical, isn't it? But uh, well, hopefully he'll be fit by the start of the season. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um, let's, let's keep the theme going with him anyway and move on to the transfers. So obviously he was a first incoming transfer as a player. Signed him on a free, I believe, from Hearts. Like, that's what he was last season. His contract expired. Um, 22 games in 89... Sorry, 22 goals in 89 games. Signed him on a three-year deal. He's going to wear the number 11. Yeah, interesting. So I think, like, what I understand, I haven't seen much of him, but I think he's a bit more of a, a winger slash forward, isn't he, rather than, like, yeah. than an out-and-out out striker. So, interesting if Duff's going to go down that route and use bit more pace on the, on the wings maybe which is something we were asking for i'm wondering if he's gonna try and play him in the wing back role yeah maybe yeah i maybe. I, I, I don't fully know how he will approach the wing back roles if they're more attacking or more defensive we'll see but um he, he likes to play apparently he'll always play with an attacking midfielder so maybe that's somewhere he can play as well yeah maybe yeah I'm not yeah. sure. I haven't like well. I haven't seen him play for Swans yet, and only from what I've seen on YouTube in other clubs. Um, Josh Key, so yeah, that's a good sign in. Exeter City, so following the likes of Mac Grimes there. Um, compensation, which I believe is going to a tribunal, not announced what that's going to be yet. Um, but free transfer, free transfer in uh, asterisk or whatever in quote marks. Um, yeah. It's because of his age, isn't it? Because he's under a certain age. There's always a compensation for his development, even though his con he's out of contract. Uh, so three-year deal plus one-year extension option afterwards. He's going to wear number two. Now, number two signals he's been signed to feature perhaps at this point anyway in the first team. So right wing back, I would imagine he specifically is for. So maybe Ginelli yeah. won't be used there, but... Um, yeah, what I mean. He's been described um, to me as raw talent. Yeah, he's he's been one that I've heard quite a lot. I've heard the name quite a lot over the last like maybe you know a season and a half. I've uh, been hearing good things, and he's just been on our radar for a while. But uh, and I think he's been at Exeter since the start, just like his first first move outside of Exeter, isn't it? So yeah, I'm, that's that's what I'm excited about because he's coming with a bit of um, 
you know, a bit of uh, a bit of hope. So I think I'm so, quite excited about that one. I've heard good things about him, so I'm hoping he just slots straight into that wing back role because we need yeah. like we need specialist players in no, in those areas this season. If we're going to play with the wing backs, we need someone like that who's just going to come in and they 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 used to play in that position. So that's a, that's an exciting one. Yeah, it is exciting. So I was on a podcast with Gabriel Sutton the other day, and and um, I was asked basically like, do we think he's going to be signed for? The first team to be starting every week, week in, week in, week out at the moment, or is it going to be someone else? Because from what they've seen, or what they know of the player, and um, Gabriel covers like all of the leagues, so is quite yeah. knowledgeable about a lot of players in the football league, more so than I would have been about Josh Key before the transfer. Just giving some information, saying that he's going to be a top championship player. Really, really confident saying that. Really confident saying a lot of potential, going to be really good, but he's a little bit raw and not quite there yet and needs work. So, are we going to give him the trust and kind of like allow for the mistakes and let him play through them because that's going to speed up his development? Or is it going to be the case of like someone else comes in and he's in and out of the team? I said for me, he's probably going to play. We're probably going to have to do that. It's going to be like maybe similar to Connor Roberts where he's raw talent. And he's gonna start, and I guess it will speed up his learning if he's in the team all the time. And um, like Ethan Laird, even as well, where we're gonna see him make mistakes, but also see very exciting things as well. So it'll be he just needs the encouragement yeah, but from maybe, the fans. And if he does yeah. make errors, maybe not have people get on his back. He is uh he is right side, isn't he? He's not left. Yeah. But uh well even even so, I think that's probably maybe he'll sort of share the that position with Norton a bit. Um, maybe, and Norton will, um, you know, sort of sort of guide him through that, share a bit of the game time, like you said, rather than him being in there all the time. Mm. Uh, maybe he'll just do a bit of both with Norton. So uh, yeah, you know, this is an ex- it is an exciting one signing young players with a big uh, with a bit of pedigree. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay, so that's that's Josh Key. Uh, Jerry Yates then, so this is the one that was announced as I was planning this podcast, so I have to quickly change some stuff, so if I miss details, apologies, but um, obviously from Blackpool, it's an undisclosed fee, I was trying to look into it, I believe it's around 2.5 million, I yeah. want to say, uh, which is a three-year deal with an option of a one-year extension afterwards, he's going to wear number nine, um, I will talk about Carl yeah. Joseph later, but there's maybe a link there. Yeah, Kyle Joseph's going the other way, so I think it was probably must be part of the deal somewhere. Yeah, so whether it's two point five mil with or without him, I'm not sure, but it's undisclosed, so I can't give a accurate figure anyway. Yeah. Exciting though, I think he's done well for Blackpool last year in a season where they got relegated. Yeah, I think I think this this is a good sign in. I think this is a not one that I expected us to make because he scored fourteen goals in a in a relegated side. I think that's uh, it, you can't knock that to get fourteen goals in the championship. Um, well, how many did Perot get? Like twenty. Twenty dead on it. Yeah, so you know if he's scoring fourteen goals in a team that was that was struggling all season, then that's that's quite exciting. I know, like that's again that's on paper. It's got to work out and it's got to click, but. Uh, You've got someone that knows where the net is, so that's quite. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one, and to give him it's nine a bit as well. Of pace as well. To give him, yeah, to give him number nine. I think that's uh, that's, that's a big goal as well. That like with you was that Rob Femi's number? Yeah, I think that signals that he's going to be. Uh, you know, who was the main man? Eleven before. Eleven last year, I can't remember. We have one. That's a good shout. I can't remember. I'm going to have a quick look. There wasn't was it the, last season. No, I thought so. I just couldn't think of anybody wearing 11. What was... Um, oh, God, I forgot his name now. What's the one that, What's the one we had on loan from West Ham? Which didn't really get a chance. They're like winger, wing back. Um, oh, go flex. Oh, he's not on this list. I'm looking. I think he was signed after it was published. He wasn't 11, was he? I don't know if he was. I just I was just thinking, but he was on loan, wasn't he? I forgot about him to be honest. Like, yeah, <laughs> I feel bad. I forgot he was he existed. Um, well, yeah, but that's that's he didn't really get a chance, did he? Jordan Garrick got given the number last year. That's weird. 
Hmm. And Dan Williams. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's basically the players that we've signed. There's one more that I can't say his name. I'm not going to lie. From Crystal Palace Academy, so it's for the for the youth team. Yeah. Malik Cadogan. Yeah. If I, if I butchered that, really sorry. Well, I've seen that one, but uh, yeah, that's that's one for the under twenty ones, isn't it? But it's good. It's kind of good that they're seeing making those signings as well. And that's what I was going to ask: was has um, Liam Smith been? Uh, Featuring at all in any of the first team games? I haven't looked at some of the lineups, but um, he's the one everyone's very excited about, isn't he? Yeah, I've only heard from the under twenty one games or the under twenty threes, whatever it is. Now they've, um, yeah, they've, people are raving about him in midfield. How old is he? He's not. He's not there, from what I can see. No. No. Oh well. But uh, tell you what, though, I did meet. Um, oh, I can't remember his name now. I met one of the goalkeepers from the under twenty ones the other day. Oh yeah, yeah. He popped into work and said hello. So if you're listening, oh, yeah. welcome. I did try to get him on you, but understandably, don't think it's allowed. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> he's very excited though. He was saying that um, he he's hopeful he's going to get opportunities in the first team this year. So oh, there interesting. We are. I, I said maybe like the Welsh Cup in it, it would be a good good way to get get his name known. But Lewis Webb is still the one that's on the bench for the friendlies at the moment with Fisher starting. So, ah, fair enough. So like he, they, they look like he one was two at the moment. Speaking of the next um, transfer, sort of. So Martin Margiston has rejoined. Yeah, yeah, he's back. Twenty twenty one, and he was raving about him, saying he's made a big difference. And he oh, thinks that he will make a big difference to Fisher as well. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's one to watch out for then. Yeah, well, is there going to be so much pressure on Fisher in terms of like the playing out of the back? No, probably not. Yeah, that's um, what I was thinking. You know, I know his mistakes came from, you know, saving shots and stuff. But like you said, his confidence, isn't it? You know, confidence when you're a goalkeeper. I think his confidence was shot last year. So if... um. You know he comes back in and he does wonders with these goalkeepers and you know maybe there's still uh there's still up there yeah so it was Evan fisher, the, the fisher was good at the end of the season though wasn't he that's what i said to um i think i was talking again on, on the podcast i was on the other day gabriel sutton um there was questions about fisher and if we're going to sign a new keeper and i was just saying for me fisher is a massive confidence player i don't think necessarily should be written off yeah but it's obvious when we're in a bad place or the team or he's in a bad place you see worse but when it's the other way he he is capable um it's just a lot of people don't have the patience to necessarily see that and goalkeepers not position where you want that to be a trait really i think yeah That's fair. Uh, the goalkeeper i was talking to is evan watts so good luck evan on your uh um, yeah. he's just signed a professional contract so he's just got through the under 18 so Oh well. Signed through to the summer of twenty twenty five. Um yeah, so he's raving about Margiston's impact anyway. Um and he thinks it should really shore up the defence a little bit as well. That's good. That's good signs. That's all I like. I to mean it, it did under Cooper, didn't it? So Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So he was there yeah, he was there when Cooper was there because it was um Freddie Woodman, wasn't it? That was the keeper at the time. Yeah. And then Alan Sheehan and Martin Patterson also joined the coaching team as both of them assistant God. head coaches. Yeah, I saw that. Alan Sheehan, I can't believe that. I remember when he uh, he played for Notts County, I think. But who did he play for? I've got a connection to Josh Sheehan now, is he? No, I no, I don't think so. I can't. I just, <laughs> if I'm if I'm thinking of the right one, I'm sure it was the one who should constantly score free kicks against us. All Alan the time. Sheehan. And I can't remember who he used to play for. I know he played for Notts County. So I think uh, he played Swindon, for else. Bradford, Peterborough, Luton, Lincoln, Northampton. Mm, Leeds. I don't know. Maybe Leeds. I don't know. Maybe Leeds. Crew, Mansfield. Quite a few Leeds, teams. I think at the time. Yeah. No, I, I know. And yeah, I remember who it is. Notts County uh, was his, um, the most, it looks like, 140. Yeah, I know he was. Yeah, I know he was Notts County. Luton. But, uh, Luton yeah, I remember well. who it was. 
Yeah, that's interesting. It's funny how it comes round. I remember when Michael Duff was playing for Burnley, and then he's like, you know, they're there now. These are sort of the players that you were watching when we were a bit younger, which is scary. Now they're all coaches. Yeah. We've had quite a few of them, really, haven't we, when you think about it? Yeah. Loudrup, even. I think Loudrup, yeah. Well, even Russell Martin to an extent as well, wasn't it? Yeah. I remember him sort of being in Norwich for ages and then being our manager. Man. Paolo Sousa. It's bloody scary, that is. Getting old. <laughs> um, okay, so that's the incomings. So, out... Sorry, no, it doesn't really be many outcomes. Is Kyle Joseph is the main one. So he's um, yeah. gone to Blackpool undisclosed fee, as already discussed. Probably some link with the Yates deal. I'm guessing... Um... Yeah, it must be. I'm guessing Latabodia is gone as well because his contract. But it was, out, he got released, and he I was. Did he not join someone? Uh, did he join someone? Yeah, I thought. Oh, well, I didn't think he was officially released. I just thought. Um, yeah, he's he's his contract on the right list was he? So. Ah oh, right, oh, gone. Yeah. So yeah, they just been... let that one run out. Um. Trying to see if he's currently got a club. I don't think he has. I know he's linked to Coventry. Yeah, I don't know if um, I feel like Coventry been linked to everyone, and they got like twenty two million from Giocaris to spend, which is absolutely insane. Like from the Giocaris we saw at Swansea. <laughs> yes, yeah, mad, isn't it? And I think he went for twenty two million. Yeah, like two years later, he's gone for twenty two million. He went to sport in Lisbon as well, didn't he? It's crazy. That's a hell of a move. Well, I think it's, I think that's good for us that that transfer has gone through because that Joe should be a benchmark. I think yeah, well, so. I, well, he did it. Too you could argue he's on par at least. One. Yeah, you could argue he's on par at least, if not better. So I think that needs to be a benchmark for uh, any potential parole transfer. So if they can get twenty million for him, um, and yeah, he's a good player. But I think like if you look like you said, Perot's done it consistently for two seasons. Yeah. Then we got to be getting at least the same amount, I think. I remember when we didn't sell him last year, and the clubs were like, "Oh well, they are interested, but they want to see if it's the one season wonder or if he can actually maintain it." And he went and got another twenty goals. So, what? The, yeah, I think Giocaris was at Coventry the year before. Maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. He was there, but he didn't have the impact, same impact. He, he had a really good season last year. I know. That. No, last season he was good. Yeah, to be fair. Well, they nearly got to the Prem, didn't they? Yeah, um, that's that's a crazy amount of money for championships. Right? That is that is ridiculous money, but it, it go it, like, that's that's worked out well for us because we can use that as yeah. a benchmark for anyone that comes in. Right, and, and they're says, like, oh god, we let them go cheap, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, like, I just hope now that because they've got that done early, uh, commentary. I just like hope that we don't it. get uh, yeah, but I hope we don't get dragged into like, you know, right down to the end of the transfer window, and then we're up against a wall where. Pro is desperately wanting to go, and then we end up selling him for like seven million. It looks like a bit of a interest war at the moment. Ah, right. There's a few. Clubs I don't know whether yeah. they, no one's bidded necessarily, but the more clubs interested, you'd like to say it's better for the price you're going to get. But maybe none of them go in. Then it, it could work both ways. So the links currently are Leicester, Southampton, Everton, Leeds, Forest, and then two Italian clubs. Correct me if I say this wrong, Lee, you're the Italian expert here. Um, Saler... <laughs> Salernitana. Sure. Yeah, that's it. With the accent he's as a... well. Say it again. Yeah, Salernitana. But he's um, that's Paolo, Su... Paolo Souza's manager there. Is he? Yeah, he's manager of uh, Salernitana, so I think uh, that's an interesting link. Yeah, well, there we are. That's one of the links. Um did they just go up or like are they in the I think they just went they up. came up they came up last season so they survived so like, this season okay I'm sure though yeah. I read that Peru were interested in them um, but the interesting one that maybe I wouldn't mind if he goes here because it means he's not against us for a start at Atalanta so apparently Man United are after their striker is it yeah for big money and yeah. Peru has been named as one of the potential replacements be right if he goes to Atalanta. Yeah, I really like that. Don't mind seeing oh, that. Like yeah, with I'll... like with Gorkares going to Sport in Lisbon, I wouldn't mind like Pro going to somewhere like that. Yeah, same sort of fee as well. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? 
Well, look, I think, like I said, it's got to be the benchmark. I think they say the clubs is twenty million or nothing. Don't even don't even talk to us if it's not twenty million. Yeah. And worst case scenario is we keep him for another season. Yeah, but then he goes on a free unless we go up. Yeah, but you chance your arm, I, I don't know. Personally, I would. I guess like it'd be nice if they have an understanding. That if he did stay, like, are you going to sign if we get promoted? Yeah, that's fair. The thing is, like, is it worth us underselling him for like seven million? You know, or, or keeping it, keeping him for a year with a chance that we could possibly get promoted. If you got Yates and Perot, I I fully expect him to go. By the way, I'm not, you know, I, I think he will go. But you know, you've got like Yates and Perot as options, and a couple of other players that we brought in. Then, you know, that's that's frightening. If you got two strikers there, one who scored twenty goals and one who scored fourteen goals last year, that's some firepower. Especially if Duff is going to play attacking football. Yeah. That's uh, that that could be frightening. So, do you risk? You know, if someone says, "I oh, will give you seven million," you might just say, "For seven million, we stuff that, and we might go up." With those two up front, but then I don't know. It depends. Are we in a position to lose seven million? That's the thing. I don't know. So that's yeah. Well, they're saying they're in, they don't need to sell, and they they're saying they're saying they're not in a club a position where they have to sell. That's what all the interviews this summer have been. Yeah, we'll see. Um, also, I've just read on an Everton fan, um, not not fan Everton like fan base website, if you like reporting on their interest in Joe Perot, they ha- they are reporting that Swansea have made it clear they're prepared to use Giocares' fee as a benchmark. Yeah, good. Well played. It's got to so, be. Let's see if there's truth in that. I would like to think that is, because people have said about them doing the mistakes, but you know, some of the players in the past going for the cheap, and they did touch on it in some interviews, I think, recently as well. So it would be good to see if they actually do hold out and get a decent fee. But surely they're looking at that, you know. They must be looking at that go up great sale and thinking, bloody hell, I want some of that. Yeah. But like it's such a that's such a strange transfer. Like, what are we missing? Like nobody came in from last year. And then if you're like if you're sporting Lisbon and you come in and you're looking at the championship, you know, would they have considered Perot? Or maybe they just you know, like you said, with agents, maybe Gorkares wanted to go and play in Lisbon, I don't yeah. know. Maybe, maybe Perot has said he wants to stay in, stay in, uh, you know, the English football system. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, scouts. That's not what's I going on. But you know, he's still, he's still there. And he's training. He's playing in the friendly. So yeah, he's he's here until he's gone. And he, um, there's some more interest though in other players. So a couple of concerning ones, Nathan Wood. Um, Brentford apparently looking at a move for him around four million, and his other clubs reportedly watching as well. That's mental, is <laughs> mental. I don't know. Is it? Is it just me? I think it's. Uh, I think it's I cheap, isn't it? I know. I think it's cheap, but I mean t- to get so much interest after one season, which he didn't play every He's been game. Been linked to like Arsenal and stuff. I know. Day. I just think, or is it just you know? The English tax. Yeah, but wouldn't he play in for England? Um, played for, he, got, he got called up for the under-21s, didn't he? But yeah. I don't think he played in this. They won the European trophy, didn't he, England in the 21s And I don't think he was in the squad. Because he's been training with us, hasn't he? And they won the European yeah. Cup. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. People rate him highly, it seems. <clears throat> I'm surprised yeah, we got him like... on a free last year, really. Because I didn't never... Yeah, really... that's why Middlesbrough let him go, I know. Unless he ran it down, but you think like if he's that highly rated, the fact that other people went in for him when he was free last year, do you know what I mean? Or maybe yeah, they were yeah. and we actually just done well to get him. Yeah, maybe. Um Mac Grimes. I mean, yeah. I don't know how much basis there is to this one. Obviously a Southampton, but I was reading they are considering making an approach. <laughs> but <laughs> It could just be the easy the easy headline. I'm not sure how much truth that is there. We were all worried about it since Martin went. He's still playing. He's still here as captain. He's still doing everything. And it's not like 
everywhere in terms of the rumours. Now and again, something pops up, and I did see it pop up, but they were apparently ready in a bit. But yeah. it's gone quiet again, because that was like two days ago. So Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I know. I guess it wouldn't be a surprise if uh, Stampton come in, but um, just, just fingers crossed that we can keep him now as well. But, yeah. Yeah. Because it, 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 like the transfer window so far is going well, didn't you? And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. So I think we need. I think we obviously we need to keep Grimes. I think he's uh, it's quite important. I would love to keep him. I mean, yeah, I think it needs to be a big fee anyway. Again, if if that's to happen, and to be fair, they've just splashed like twelve million on like a Manchester City youngster for midfield. So that no one really knows about. <laughs> that's an interesting one. Yeah. What was his name? But yeah, twelve million. Or fifteen million, right? Or maybe it's twelve. Fifteen. Million. I will get it. No, I'll get it. Up. Obviously, I haven't got Southampton news to my fingertips. So here we are. Shea Shea Charles, fifteen million. I don't know much about him. But what I'm saying is, if he plays in the mid midfield, then that's a lot of money to spend on the midfielder in Championship. Um, like oh, he hasn't yeah. even he hasn't even been on loan anywhere. He literally yeah. played one game in Manchester City's senior team. Yeah. Bad deal. He played one game that's... in the Premier League last year. That's a lot of money, isn't it? So they always rated him a decent amount, Man City, to have him play in the Premier League and then sell him for 15 million. Yeah. But he's not gone low anywhere. So, like, limited first team appearance, really, from what from what I can see, anyway. Yeah. Um, so maybe that means they're not going to go in for Mac Rhymes. Like, I, I don't know. Have they sold many players to Southampton since they've? Come not down? that I'm aware of. No, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen much about it. They might have, but I haven't seen anything pop up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's a lot of money to splash out, and they've brought Manning in as well on a free. I know, but wages are probably decent. Well, well, we couldn't afford his wages, could we? <laughs> Apparently. No, but uh, there we go. Okay, and then I've already spoke about Carl Joseph. So that's all I've seen so far in terms of um, <clears throat> anything interesting to talk about. There's not so much noise anywhere else. Um, some links, though. So we've got a left back, Lee Buchanan. He was currently playing at um, Verde Bremen. Used to play for Derby. Fair enough. Oh, yeah. What we Youngster, need, do we need someone? Yeah. We need someone on the left, don't we? Indeed. Um, Kinney and Davis from Aston Villa. So he's got 12 months left on his contract. He's not really getting much action at Villa. That's a good one. Striker. So I, I guess, I mean, I know we're probably going to have a few more strikers available under this system that he wants to play. So. We got now so we'll have Cullen if we don't include Perot, Cullen, Cullen Yates, and Whitaker. Depends where you're gonna say that Whitaker and Janelli are gonna play, yeah, because there's not really been much talk about Whitaker going either, which is surprising, yeah. I know, yeah, that's uh, that seems to have just gone really quiet, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe he's um, maybe he's gonna get another chance under new manager, see, maybe he'll get another yeah. bit of a run, maybe. Yeah. Um, and we got this one is really exciting, but I'm not sure how much interest we actually have. And I know the likes of Coventry are also after him. And I did read that because I've got, I've, I'm in a chat now with a bunch of other podcasts across the league so that I keep getting spammed with information about all the different clubs and their transfers. I'm sure I was reading that he was training with Coventry at one point. Dylan Venti. So he's from Rodda JC. Um, and he's kind of like, if you think of Joel Perot's last two seasons, very similar. 46 goals in the last two seasons. And he's saying nice. he's looking for a new challenge. Nice. You'd imagine Coventry would be in with Kyokere's going. They've got the like money that. on hand, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So, so we'll see on that one. I mean, it would be exciting if we can get him, but we'll see. 
And then the goalkeeper I was talking about earlier, Vasilis Barkas, if I've said that right again, sorry if I haven't, <laughs> um, who would be a free transfer. He used to play for Celtic. When he was there, he was labelled a flop and he spent the last season on loan from Celtic at Utrecht. If I said that right? Utrecht, is it? Utrecht. I'm yeah. so bad at foreign pronunciation. It's awful. <laughs> Hold my hands up to it, though. Yeah, Utrecht, I think that's, uh, that's where Vaughan came from. Yeah. So he did. I looked at his stats, and it looks like he was their first team keeper last year. Played a lot of games. Don't know much about him, but other than the fact that they weren't happy at Celtic, clearly. But if it's maybe someone that's available on a free and he's had the experience in those leagues, obviously, if Ben does out till Christmas, maybe that's what the thinking is. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, I just guess we don't really know what the. Um... What the thinking is with the goalkeepers, is it going to be a Fisher is number two and then Bender coming back, it'll be one and two, or are they or are they maybe looking to bring in another number two and maybe Fisher gets phased out? You don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Is Fisher going to go to Southampton? <laughs> I doubt it. No. I think he probably realised his mistake now. Maybe. Okay. That's all of the transfer news I have anyway. A um, little bit of news from internally this time. Not much left to talk about. We'll end soon. Um, so we talked about Michael Duff and Jamie Patterson, which the Patterson stuff I was going to include, but we've already done it. Joe Allen's been talking. I guess we touched on this a bit earlier, saying about how he's not always able to play all the time. So he said, I want to have a much bigger impact for Swansea City this season. And he's been talking about how Injury difficulties didn't give him the season that he perhaps wanted last year. Yeah, It'd be good. Well, if he can play, if well, he, at the end of the season he was good. He was playing well when he got the red card, didn't he? Um, yeah. So I think like beginning of the season was a bit stop start, and then he was in. He was in at the end of the season. He was playing well. So yeah, if you can get, like you said if you get half the games out of him and he plays that well, then we'll be we'll be in a good position. Yeah. He's not going to play every game. We know we've, we've touched on that, but I think yeah, if you can get good performances out of him, like every other game, or you get sixty minutes out of him, I don't know how they're going to manage him. But uh, yeah, we'll be in a good spot. He was saying his aim is to stay fit for the entire season. So we'll I still see. think I still think his role um, could be coming off the bench. I think because if you want to play attack in football, and then you know you two nil up away from home, seventy fifth minute, seventieth minute. I think he's just an absolute perfect player to bring on to like calm the match down and see it out, you know. And even if pressure's coming on, he's brilliant at breaking up play in the midfield. I yeah, think I, I think agree. that's a I think that's a perfect role for him. But you know, obviously he wants to start. But I think that would be uh, be great. Whatever we get the best out of him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apologies for that. Just uh, a little bit tired. <laughs> had a big yawn. Anyway, um, Liam Cullen, I want to hit the ground running this season. So obviously he had a good end to the season. Um, yeah, giving it a big talk now. He's after his nine goals and two assists the last term, and I think he had a really good run between December and January, where he scored something like um, five goals. So yeah. four goals and one assist in five games. Um, good. Saying he wants to kick on and kind of have a full season where he's doing well. What yeah. do you think his impact could be? I don't know. It's a strange one because uh, uh, I think it's probably a bit of a shame for him that they've signed yet. It's uh, going to be two strikers probably though, playing. Yeah, maybe. So he's going to have to fight it out with Whittaker again probably if... Um... Yeah, but like two strikers, you have to maybe, you know, match in a week, match on a weekend... You're gonna you start with two, you're probably gonna be at least one of them is gonna get subbed. He needs it's gonna be opportunities. He needs like continued game time again, though. I hope like he doesn't get pushed to the side again because I think he did have a good he did have a good season last year, got called up to the Wales squad. Um so I'd just like to still see see him get some game time because I think he's uh you know, I think he was great for us when he came in. Yeah, he did well. Um <clears throat> Be interesting to see how much he can get himself on the pitch. I mean, he obviously got a Wales call up as well, so he's in a good period of progressing in his career. Yeah. It'd be a shame to see it um, 
slowdown, I guess. Yeah. So hopefully he can maintain that. Um, <clears throat> who else we got then? We've got Ollie Cooper. He's been talking about his kind of breakthrough season, saying that he's targeting even more this season. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, it was weird. Last season, he seemed to get pushed right out, didn't he? In that last well, the end. Yeah, in the end. Yeah, I don't think he had much game time at all, did he? So but we were doing well, I guess. It's hard to... Yeah, no, I know. But uh, yeah, no, he didn't get much game time. So I think he'll have to... Yeah, kind of work his way back in, and well, like, I think he's going to give everyone a fresh start. But it'd be nice to see him back to yeah. the way he was playing earlier on in the season when he was brilliant. He's made his Wales debut against Latvia in March as well. Yeah, that was good. So, I'd like to see him have an impact this year. Now, one thing that could change his impact is the formation. I've been assured that we're going to be using a central attacking midfielder, so we'll see. On that one, um, the Barnsley fan I was chatting to, Neil, was telling me that is uh, ever-present, and so did Gabriel Sutton, also said a very focal point of Duff's tactics. That maybe could be a role that suits Ollie Cooper to like grab by the scruff of the neck. Who's he going to be up against for competition there? Maybe like Patterson, Whitaker, and Cham. Yeah. Like, would, um, who, over them, who would you call out and out tens and a Whitaker at Plymouth, that's where he was playing and that's where he was adamant he wanted to continue to play when he got recalled and maybe that's why it didn't quite work for him when he did get recalled. Depends what type of player you want, isn't it? If you want somebody who's like, you know, pulling strings, that's sort of like a midfielder that's pushed forward or whether you've got like a striker type player that's pushed back. Uh, yeah, so it depends. Depends what sort of player you want there because you could have like a Stephen Dobby type player who's kind of like a striker. Um God, I loved it when Dobby was playing in that role. That was just, oh, it was just amazing. It was so good. We are um, comparing to Dobby now, then Whitaker. No, I just saying like this more of a striker, isn't he? That was sort of pushed back into a deeper role, rather than like a midfielder that's pushed forward. It's like a different type of player, isn't it? Um, I don't know. Unless I'd, I'd like to see Grimes have a go in there. I think that would be fun. That's where he started at Exeter, didn't he? When he first I came, think that would be. I think that I'd love to see playing. that. I'd love to see Alex. him in that pocket, just like threading balls and then smashing some top corner. Uh, I think he's, he's he is where he is now, isn't he? I'm yeah, sure I know. I, I can't see it happening. I wouldn't mind seeing it though if it ever, like you know, if they ever tried it. But uh, out of those, I don't know. Probably, um, I don't know. I'd say probably, I'd say probably Ollie Cooper. To be honest, is probably the more um, Patterson as well. I think Cooper or Patterson, I would say, is are the more complete players to play in that position. I think in Cham. But is that where you get the best out of in Cham as well? Oh, you say that, I like, yeah. and Chams have tech second top goal scorer last year. Yeah, I know, and he had half uh, the game time of uh, Cooper. Not saying he's better than Cooper or anything like that. Like Cooper's able to operate wide, and I think that's where he was used a lot of last season. And maybe why he didn't have as many goal contributions. Having him in the number ten role maybe gives him more opportunity to get involved. I think that's where he probably played more of his time in Newport as well, where he had a good uh, season. Yeah, I don't know if uh, I don't know if there's any rumours on in Cham. I thought he would, he might. There was something, but it got shut down. Ah, right. I can't okay. remember yeah. where it was. Though. Depends the way we go on. I guess you've got you're quite diverse in that area. You could play different types of play. I think they all bring something different. Because um, Patterson, when he played there, when he was on top form, was brilliant, wasn't he? Did he ever play there? Yeah, he was put sort of playing there, wasn't he? With because um, it was like him and then Perot up top. I thought he was always left wide because there was three, wasn't there? Nah, he was, someone on the. No, I think he was more playing in the middle. If you think of like, they just drifted when he was in on though, top form. I think he wasn't necessarily just him in the middle, like the full-on cam. I don't think Martin ever really used that. We used know. to say about it being a gap behind a striker all the time. Yeah, maybe. I just think of all the times where he used to pick up the ball, or he was in that slot. Like he scored the goal against Cardiff in the middle, didn't he? Maybe. I, I mean, might be wrong. They, they do adjust stuff. No, sometimes. maybe. Like you said, he was playing on the left, but he was just in that position a lot, like drifting in. But uh, mm. yeah, I could see him doing that man if he's on top of him. And then he would come in, probably. Yeah, but I could see Patterson doing that role. Um, yeah. When he's playing on top form, he can do it. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, that's that's an interesting one. I don't know. It depends which way he likes. I don't know. Thing is, with Cham, if if he's not 
going to be in that role? Where is he going to be? Because then you have to ask him to drop further back in one of the two midfield slots. No, I think he's got to be in that role, isn't he? Um, in Cham, if if that is the way he plays, but it just depends whether or not. I don't know. It's difficult to see everything. what they've been doing in the friendlies. There's no like, it's not on sofa scores. So you can't see how they set up or anything. Yeah, I guess we'll get a proper look now when they play like a home when they play the home friendly against Bristol Rovers or. Uh, I know they got Oxford away as well. They got a couple of friends. They got Red in as well away at some point. So I think, yeah, um, yeah we'll see. we'll get a bit more of an inkling then. I think what he's doing. It looks to me here that he's played in the first half of one of them was um, Fulton Allen and Cham ahead of him with so that, yeah, that, that would be good up front. So that'd be two holders, two holder midfielders yeah. with one attacking midfielder. And then second half, it's. Grimes, oh, it's difficult to work out this one. Congreve, Grimes, Patterson. Hmm. Congreve's got to be right back there, actually. Right way back, I think. So it'll be Grimes, Patterson, Cooper, Piro, Cullen. So that's got to be Cooper and Grimes holding and Patterson further forward. But that's, that's two up top as well. Yeah, it's Piro, Cullen. That's what I said. It's going to be two up top with someone behind. But in the first half, it was just Whitaker, wasn't it? No, it was Whitaker and Josh Thomas. Sorry, I didn't. Oh, Josh Thomas. Yeah, I so didn't... you're right. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like it is going to be two up top with one behind. That's uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and two holding. That's that's what he goes for apparently. And so. then it'll have to be wing backs because you got to be, yeah, it'll be three like or five at the back, however you want to call it. Yeah. Two one two in the middle. Yeah. Um, and in the other game, then it was Grimes, Allen, Cooper, Cullen, Peru. So that's clearly Cooper in the. Behind the striker, yeah. so unless he Cooper. did use Patterson alongside Grimes, which is interesting. Um, God and then so unless he just tried to put Kubo, uh, push Kubo back and put Patterson in there, and he's just given them all game time in that position. Yeah. I don't know. And then you've got yeah. Felton, Patterson, and Cham, Josh Thomas, Whitaker. That's exciting, though. Like two up top, attacking midfielder. That's very attacking. So there again, though, Felton, Patterson, and Champ. The way that they've listed it both times is like Patterson before this instance and Champ. The other instance, Ollie Cooper. So I'm wondering if he is playing Patterson in the centre midfield position. That's a big call, though, isn't it? It is, yeah. Unless he's doing if, one if holding playing... midfielder and two cams. Yeah, maybe, but that's that's very attacking. Um, it is. But I think maybe yeah, if you're going to go like box to box, because if you're going to play two up top, you've sacrificed um, someone in the middle there, and you're like a holder. So I think uh, that's exciting. But you have to have very two good holder midfielders there. Well, I think like a perfect thing would be Grimes, <laughs> Grimes and Grimes and Fulton as two holders would be perfect. Yeah. With Alan coming into the mix now and then, and then having. Your two strikers, and then either or Patterson, Cooper, and um, who's the other one? Patterson, Cooper, and Cham. Speaking of Felton, do you like his new hair? Yeah, his bleach blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> also, on, on Gabriel That's Sutton's powerful. podcast, Gabriel told me does not rate Felton. I was like, what? No. Uh, I think I remember what the conversation we were talking about Grimes and uh, if he goes, who's going to replace him and do his job and all that sort of stuff. Gave me a good recommendation from Barnsley. I forgot the name now. Um, saying basically could do the same job as Grimes, um, in their opinion. And then basically brushed Felton's impact off, saying doesn't rate him. It doesn't rate him at all. I was just like, don't agree with that, but fair, fair comment. Yeah, that's a strange one because I think uh, Fulton's been good, especially yeah. like towards the back end of last season as well. I think he's been brilliant. I th he's just he he offers something different in our midfield to what none of the others do. Yeah. Um, if you take Fulton out, there's no grit. I, that's harsh. There is grit. There's no like, no one's gonna go and two foot someone. <laughs> yeah, a bit of um. I don't, I know what you mean. I don't know the word. Bit of an edge, yeah. Like he, he protects Grimes, doesn't he? Is the knees, the leg Grimes do what he wants to do. A bit more of a physicality yeah. in the midfield and a bit of an edge, yeah. Yeah. 
I think he does it well. But yeah. that's uh, there we go. It was interesting to hear that opinion. Yeah, well, it's interesting what people say in it from the outside. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe it was uh, Russell Martin's style. He didn't come across the best in maybe, maybe, maybe. But on that note, I've got nothing else. Have you got anything else you want to touch on before we call it a day? No, I think that's it for me. I know a bit of a long one. We had a week off last week, so yeah. there was a lot to fit in. It's pre-season in there. There's news every week. Yeah. Um, it's hard to hard to talk about it all. I think yeah. we probably we haven't even touched on certain things. Oh, that's the one thing. When the, the League Cup, I said we were going to reply to someone's comments. So in the last video, um, somebody asked us in the comments on the last YouTube video. So again, the question is always welcome. We'll try and answer them either in person or on the video the next podcast we do um and we were asked what we think of swansea city's involvement playing in the welsh league cup yeah i, I think yeah i quite like it i think it's uh it's an opportunity for the under 21s i think more so isn't it to play uh first team football would be a good experience for them so uh yeah why not i think uh yeah it'd be good and yeah we, we were trying to find Cardiff information to find on uh the rules because the way the club announced it made it look like youth team are going to play which i think is going to be the case i was trying to see if that's like a rule of the competition i couldn't find any information on it yeah, but i, I, don't I, know I think i think there'll be overlap when they i think like obviously the welsh premier league and the cups will be yeah. played on like saturday afternoons so i think there'll be overlap with obviously our like normal fixtures so i can't see many um you know, first team players being able to play because of the timing of it. Like, for example, the first round against Carmarthen is on the Saturday and on the Friday night, we've got a friendly against Oxford away, which will be the first team. And then obviously you'll probably have the under 21s having a run out against Carmarthen. So I think it, it, it's probably for that. And maybe, you know, maybe you'll get some players who are not in the first team or trying to get try and get back fit playing in those games as well. So... Yeah, I know why not. Yeah, it'd be interesting. It's a wild card entries for us in Cardiff, isn't it? So I don't think it'd be a yearly thing. Um, but it's nice to be part of. Uh, if we go on and win it, do they get a European place for that? I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question, actually. They used know. to, didn't they? Yeah, it's not yeah, it's not a bad shout. Imagine that. I feel like there'd be some complications with that. It's the it's it's the League Cup though, isn't it? I don't know if it's they got the Welsh FA nah, Cup maybe. as well. Maybe you're done for that one then. Yeah, because sure. maybe that's why actually. Because I'm sure the reason we couldn't enter it is because of the whole like you're either an English club or a Welsh club. If you're going to play in the English league system, yeah. you go to Europe. You count as an English club going to Europe, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Which is annoying, but um, that's the way it is. Yeah, well, back in the day, we used to play in the in the proper Welsh Cup, didn't we? And uh, I remember, like, well, it was the last game of the Vetch when we beat Wrexham in the final of the Welsh Cup. But it's another reason they stopped it, I think. Yeah, but then we yeah, like we didn't obviously have um European places from that. So I think that might be the last time I can remember us playing in the in the Welsh Cup, I think. Just us and Cardiff used to win it every year. Yeah, this is this is this is different or this is the League Cup, so I maybe there's not uh not an entry yeah, in Europe for it. That's right, yeah. Interesting anyway. Um yeah. it'd be nice to see them do well if they can, especially if a lot of the youth are getting involved. It's just extra game time and more competitive level as well for those players to be Yeah, it was a good opportunity as well and, you know, for um, you know, Welsh Welsh teams to play against Swansea and Cardiff as well, you know. Yeah. If they could make it a regular thing, that'd be pretty cool. I don't think Yeah, it's I think happen. it's good. No, and I don't even know if what other teams usually get the wild cards though. I'm not sure. Not sure. Weird. There we go. Um, unless it's like Wrexham or something, I don't know. Um, there we go then. That's let's call it a day on that one. It's been a been a long one, but we'll be back. Well, I, I don't know what's, um, when our next video will be. Hopefully soon. Um, hopefully get some guests on as well. I'm thinking of maybe seeing if I can try and sort out some pre-season overview stuff with a bunch of other podcasters for each club in the league. So I'll yeah, see if I can... Good draft that up because obviously it'd be a lot of work but if i can get the time in sorted and availability of the other people in line even if we don't get every club but we get a lot of a, a lot of them i'll yeah. be good to see if i can get some in sorted so keep an eye out for that anyway and um don't forget to get involved in the giveaway so twitter and instagram to enter all the instructions at the start of this video i'll be doing a tweet and a post on instagram 
with all the information and that is where you need to enter on those posts so keep an eye for those when they come up in the next few days if not already if I can't, I, whenever this goes out recording on the 14th of uh july so whatever day you're listening to have a look earlier if you need to and um get involved in the giveaway so i'll be going on for a couple of weeks until the first game of the season and then we'll pick a winner so good luck and we shall Sounds see you good. in the next video so let us know in the comments below everything about what we spoke about what's your opinions on the transfers in so far how do you think we're going to do under tough and we shall see you next time so have a good one see you soon